Tenzin Gyatso, better known as the Dalai Lama, is the surprisingly social media savvy spiritual leader of the Tibetan people. You've probably seen him around, maybe giving a speech to the UN or chatting on late night talk shows, though our stereotypical idea of Buddhists might lead us to believe that he's a serene and serious kind of guy, he's actually kind of funny if you've watched any interviews of him. But for the Chinese government, he is anything but funny. They see him as a politically subversive figure that threatens their authority, and if the Chinese government gets their way, they would love to choose the next Dalai Lama. However, the Dalai Lama himself has signaled that he might be the last one. So, what even is the Dalai Lama, and why does Tenzin Gyatso think that the succession of the Dalai Lama must end? In Tibetan Buddhism, a Lama is a spiritual teacher and ritual expert. Lamas fulfill all types of roles for their local community, ranging from religious teaching to even astrology and divining. The Dalai Lama, Dalai meaning big, is the title conferred to the spiritual and political leader of the Tibetan people. Tenzin is the 14th man to hold the title, but the role stretches back to the 15th century. Throughout most of the Dalai Lama's history, they were just as much political leaders as they were spiritual leaders. Hanging out in the highest echelons of power with Mongol chieftains and Chinese emperors, the fifth Dalai Lama, also known as the Great Fifth, is among the most famous, a 17th century ruler of Tibet who forged the Dalai Lama into a political dynasty. The current Dalai Lama is no political slouch himself, though. When the People's Republic of China invaded Tibet in the 1950s, he tried to negotiate, even traveling to Beijing to talk to Mao Zedong himself. However, diplomacy broke down, and in 1959, fearing kidnapping by the Chinese government, he escaped into India and formed a government in exile. He has been living there ever since then. Despite his past as a political leader, he's actually given up his political powers in 2011 and has focused on religious and ethical teaching. But even as a religious leader, he's not comparable to the Pope and Catholicism. He's not the head of all Buddhists. Just like any religion, Buddhism is a complex religion that takes many forms. You have Japanese Zen Buddhism and Sri Lankan Theravada Buddhism. Some scholars categorize Tibetan Buddhism as a distinct branch called Vajrayana Buddhism. Vajrayana is historically linked to the largest branch of Buddhism called Mahayana, and the succession of the Dalai Lama draws inspiration from the Mahayana conception of the Bodhisattva, exemplary beings dedicated to attaining Buddhahood and showing compassion for other beings. Tibetan Buddhists believe that the Dalai Lama reincarnates as a child when he dies. Now, Buddhists in general believe that all sentient beings reincarnate, but most beings can't remember their past lives. Only exceptional people can remember, and some called tulkus can direct their reincarnation, establishing a lineage of famous lamas that stretch back through the ages. Though it's impossible to know for sure, at least some scholars estimate that there are at least 10,000 tulkus. Some are heads of monasteries or important religious orders, but the Dalai Lama is the most important lineage of tulkus. The Tibetans have an elaborate process of identifying and testing the successor. In the case of the 13th Dalai Lama, he predicted that he would reincarnate somewhere in eastern Tibet. After his death, high-ranking lamas traveled there, and they found the young Tenzin as the candidate for the 14th Dalai Lama following a series of tests, one of which being the kid recognizing the prayer beads and walking stick of the 13th Dalai Lama. They concluded that he is the same being, the 13th Dalai Lama reincarnated in this child. However, the succession is under threat. Because of his history of anti-Chinese resistance in Tibet, the Chinese government has long worked to undermine the Dalai Lama's authority. They've banned displaying a photograph of the Dalai Lama, they've launched re-education campaigns that force Tibetan dissenters to repeat statements like, I oppose the Dalai clique and I love the Communist Party, and they've even gone as far as to say that they alone have the authority to name the successor of the Dalai Lama. In a 2017 press conference, a foreign ministry spokesman said, the title of Dalai Lama itself is granted by China's central government. And they've shown more than enough willingness to try to meddle with the reincarnation of lamas. In 1995, when the Dalai Lama named a six-year-old boy as the successor for the Panchen Lama, the second most important spiritual leader after the Dalai Lama, the Chinese government abducted the kid and named their own Panchen Lama. To this day, Tenzin's choice for the Panchen Lama remains in custody, and there's a good chance that the Chinese government will try to do the exact same thing with the Dalai Lama's succession. But the succession of the Dalai Lama might be in jeopardy because he himself 
himself might choose to be the last one. Stretching back to the 1970s, he's been floating the idea again and again that he might be the last Dalai Lama. In a 2014 interview with the BBC, he said, the Dalai Lama institution will cease one day. These man-made institutions will cease. There is no guarantee that some stupid Dalai Lama won't come next who will disgrace himself or herself. So much better that a centuries-old tradition should cease at the time of a quite popular Dalai Lama. The Chinese regional governor of Tibet in 2015 dismissed the Dalai Lama's claim, saying it's not up to him and the Dalai Lama must be chosen with the approval of the central government. The Dalai Lama has tried to head off the possibility of the Chinese government usurping the position, arguing that he alone has the authority whether or not to reincarnate and that no recognition or acceptance should be given to a candidate chosen for political ends by anyone, including in the People's Republic of China. But at the time of making this video, we just don't know what's going to happen. The Dalai Lama has not yet made his intentions clear. He does say that he'll leave written instructions, and he has said that he will definitely reincarnate outside of Tibet, but the Chinese government probably has their own plans too. In short, this is another example of politics and religion being intertwined. As a historically political figure, the reincarnation of the Dalai Lama is not just a matter of theology and doctrine, it has major implications for the future of the Tibetan people and the future of religious freedom rights in China. I have sources in the description below if you'd like to do some more research. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, so I did this video in collaboration with Step Back History. He's an awesome YouTuber, focuses on history and a little bit of religion as well. If you head over to his channel right now, you'll see his Buddhism Explained video. Check it out, and as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.